Hello everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'd like to go over xenon lamps and metal halide lamps. Before we get started, I'd like to warn you guys, xenon and metal halide bulbs should only be handled with gloves. These bulbs contain high pressure gas at about 30 bar, so please don't drop them. They'll shatter and explode and it's not gonna be cool. Here's a typical 300 watt ceramic short arc xenon bulb. This is what that exact same bulb looks like when it's in its proper light assembly. Notice that the bulb is shrouded with a giant metal heat sink. If you notice, right where the heat sink meets the bulb, there's gonna be some splatter here and there, and that is gonna be your thermal compound that adequately ensures the heat goes from the bulb to the heat sink. This is a cutaway view of a metal halide lamp. You'll see a lot of these bulbs in things like microscopes. What you'll notice is that this bulb does not have a heat sink. It also has a cord coming out of it. This bulb doesn't have a heat sink because it's going to use convection air cooling. Here's that same metal halide lamp when it's mounted inside a light source. Notice how the light is focused to the opposite side of the light source where it enters into the light guide tubing. The light guide tubing is going to take the light to the point of care. Also take notice that there's a giant cooling fan beneath the bulb. As I said earlier, it uses convection air cooling. This is a simple circuit for a xenon lamp power supply. Xenon lamps are triggered by a high voltage spike and then they're maintained with low voltage, high current DC power. Here you'll see a close up view of an anode and cathode. And the reason that there's a lot of blue near the cathode is because that's where most of the light will originate. The light is going to stave off pretty dramatically the further it gets away from the cathode. Now what happens in a xenon lamp is a high voltage electronic arc will go between the cathode and anode and that excites the xenon atoms. The xenon atoms will move to a higher energy level and then when they drop down to a lower energy level, they have to do something with that energy. And what they do is they create photons. The other side effect of this is that the anode and cathode will gradually wear away. As they wear away, you'll notice that you'll get things like arc wander, arc flare, and arc flutter. Arc wander is where the electronic arc will gradually wander from a center point and it'll get wider and wider until eventually it arcs over to something else. Arc flare is where you will get a flashing inside the bulb. Same thing with arc flutter. It creates a watery liquid type effect to the light that's emitted from the lamp. Surgeons will often complain that the lamp is either not bright enough or it looks like it's flashing. Here you'll see a new bulb. And if you notice between the cathode and anode, there's almost an indistinguishable hot spot or arc spot. You can pick up a lamp while you're doing a PM and you take a look at the anode and cathode. And if you see almost no hot spot there or arc spot, then that means it's probably a low hour or brand new bulb. Here we have an older bulb, and you'll notice that the dark spot between the anode and cathode is a wee bit larger. This is a close up of the same bulb. Notice how large the hot spot is. This bulb was about 500 hours into use. Here's one of those anomalies I mentioned. This is an example of a large arc burn. The arc has discolored and permanently damaged the parabolic reflector. This will only get worse until the bulb catastrophically fails. If you look very carefully here, you'll see the start of a parabolic reflector burn. Now you have to move the bulb back and forth under a bright light, but if you look carefully enough, you'll see it. This bulb has two anomalies. Not only is there a burn spot, but you notice that there's a little bit of clouding. Both of these signify that this bulb doesn't have too much longer to live. It should be changed out pretty soon. Here's yet another Zeiss Knievo bulb where it's got major arc burn to the parabolic reflector. This bulb probably has about 350 to 400 hours. Take a look at this bulb. You'll notice that there's two effects that are happening to the glass. In the upper right hand corner, there's a hot spot that's created an anomaly in the glass. In the lower left, you'll see that there's some splatter and also some clouding that's happening on the edge of the glass. Now besides those anomalies, which are created by the depletion of the anode and cathode, there's other things that can dramatically reduce the life of a bulb. 
you'll see here, this is a bulb assembly that's got probably three or 400 hours on it, but it hasn't been cleaned anytime soon. If the bulb's dirty, you can bet you when you take a look inside that light source, it's also gonna be dirty. Make sure you clean the fans, the optics, all the cabling, and especially the power supply. Here's an example of a Zeiss Opmi microscope that I spotted as I was going through an operating room. Notice how the lamp assembly is slightly ajar from the back of the microscope. When the lamp assembly is ajar like this, it won't ignite because there's a micro switch that detects when it's fully inserted. You'll see this in a later photo. But I couldn't eject the lamp assembly because it was stuck. The black button at the bottom is the eject button and no matter how hard you press on it, no matter how you jiggle it, it just wouldn't eject. I ended up taking this down to my shop so that I could pull it apart more effectively. When I got it down to the shop, I finally got the lamp assembly pried from the microscope and I noticed immediately it had melted connectors. Here you can see the bulb, it's an XBO bulb, and you can see the pin that's obviously melted, and the other one is not much better for wear. This is what a good connector looks like on the same XBO bulb. On an XBO, you see as the bulb wears, it becomes blunt or discolored at the cathode. On a good bulb, it should be sharp, very pointy, and it should be bright and shiny on the cathode. Since the bulb was burnt, I decided to take a look up into the light assembly and see what else was going on. Here's my initial findings. You can see it is very dirty in there. This thing has been abused for some time. When it's this dirty, it means we gotta dig deeper. When we pulled the covers off, this is what we found. Everywhere inside this light source was dirty. It needed some detailed cleaning. The problem is when the fan gets this dirty and the incoming air ducts get dirty, the bulb is going to run at a much hotter temperature. A hotter bulb is probably going to pull more current than a cold bulb, so it's going to contribute to the problem. Also, the bulb, as it gets older, the gap is also going to get larger, it's going to draw more current, and that's going to heat those pins. This is what the lamp assembly looked like before I removed the bulb. This is what the mating connector inside the microscope looked like before we cleaned it out and adjusted the pins. Here you can also notice the lamp detect micro switch. If the bulb won't slide in all the way and contact that micro switch, it won't turn on the light. These are just some of the problems that took this microscope out of service, all because of poor maintenance, poor cleaning, and neglect. That's all I got at this moment for you guys. I'd like to say thanks to Zeiss for their images and their detailed explanation of xenon lamps. And thanks to all you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I've got some excellent videos I'm going to be producing as soon as I can edit footage.